We just learned about modular arithmetic, which of course is dealing with bases of numbers. So if we were looking at mod 3 edition, that is base 3. What we're going to look at next is different representations of integers. So in this video specifically, we're going to look at how to find a decimal expansion, which is base 10 expansion, the number system that we're used to, from a binary, base 2, octal, a base 8, or hexadecimal, base 16, integer representation. Let's take a look at what an expansion is all about because of course that's sort of the basis of the next four videos. And what we're looking at at an expansion is being able to write something as a value with different bases. So this theorem is no matter what your base is, we can write an integer, a positive integer, as a decimal expansion in this form. This form says I'm going to take some value a sub k, a sub k minus 1, multiplied by a base to a power, a base to a power. Now obviously the base is going to be the same for each one. So if I'm doing a decimal expansion, then b is 10, my base is 10. If I'm doing binary expansion, then b is 2. If I'm doing an octal expansion, then b is 8. And if I'm doing hexadecimal, then b is 16. And those are the ones that we're going to focus on because of course all of these are very important uh, in computer language. Now it is important to point out that we are going to write a decimal expansion just for practice, but in the, uh, the examples that follow this it will say write something as a decimal expansion. Typically we're not going to write something base 10 using the format that I'm going to show you right now. It's this one's just for practice. So if I wanted to write 10,456 as a decimal expansion, I would say one is in the 10,000s place. Well, this is a base 10 number, right? So this is the ones place, that's 10 to the zero. This is the tens place, that's 10 to the first. This is the hundreds place, that's 10 squared. This is the thousands place, that's 10 to the third, and this is the ten thousands place, or 10 to the fourth. So this is 1 times 10 to the fourth, plus 0 times 10 to the third, plus 4 times 10 squared, plus 5 times 10 to the first, plus 6 times 10 to the zero. So if they really wanted me to write it as an expansion, this is what it would look like. But again, in the next examples that we do, it will say, write it as an expansion, and I'm just going to write a solution that looks like this. And that's pretty standard for decimal expansion because that is the format of values that we are used to. So let's look first at binary to decimal expansion. And you may or may not be familiar with the binary system. Binary is made up of zeros and ones. Again, because base two means I can either have a remainder of zero or a remainder of one. And if we're dealing with this, we're going to do the exact same thing we did before. Remember, even though this is not base 10, this is still now base two, so this is two to the zero power. And this is two to the first. And this is two to the second. And typically what I do, because I'm lazy and don't want to have to write the two that many times, I just say this is the zero power, first power, second power, third power, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh power. So then, as I am now trying to write this in the proper format, I'm going to say that 1011101101 base 2, and that's how they indicate base 2, can be rewritten as, and then I'm going to look at my first value, which is 1, and that's the seventh power, so 1 times 2 to the seventh. So those values that I wrote underneath are just the exponents on my base of 2, again, 2 because it's binary. So then I move on to the next value, which is 0. 0 times 2 to the sixth, plus 1 times 2 to the fifth, plus 1 times 2 to the fourth. And again, I'm just looking at these values and these exponents. Plus 1 times 2 to the third, plus 1 times 2 to the second, plus 0 times 2 to the first, 
plus 1 times 2 to the 0. From here I'm going to just do some simplification. So this is 1 times 128. I'm not even going to work with the 0 because who cares. So this is 1 times 32 plus 1 times 16 plus 1 times 8 plus 1 times 4. Again, the 0 I'm not going to mess with plus 1 times 1. And if I add up 128, 32, 16, 8, 4, and 1, I get 189. Now keep in mind it said write the decimal expansion. And as I said before, if you're writing a decimal expansion, we're not going to then turn that back into 1 times 10 squared plus 8 times 10 plus 9 because base 10 is the number system that we use. So we're just going to keep it as 189. So the same way that we just did for a binary to decimal expansion, now we're going to look at an octal to decimal expansion. And of course, octal means the base is 8. So here we have the number 4072, um, base 8. I want to turn that into a base 10 number. So I'm going to go about it in the same way I did before. And remember, I start on the right, and it's just a good little numbering system to help you know exactly what we're dealing with here. And the numbers that I've written beneath, again, are going to be the exponents on the base of 8. So if I'm writing 4072 base 8 into a decimal expansion, I'm going to say I have 4 times 8 to the third because 4 is my first digit and 3 was that exponent plus 0 times 8 squared plus 7 times 8 to the first plus 2 and again you could put times 8 to the 0 but we don't have to so again these are just my exponents and then up here these are the numbers that I'm multiplying so just as I did before, you can show that step in between if you want to show um, that this is 4 times 512 and 0 times 64 and 7 times 8 plus 2, or you could just go straight to this step, which is to find 2048 plus 0, plus 56, plus 2, and then my final answer of course would be 2106, and again this is base 10, so it's okay to go ahead and put that base 10. Uh, keep in mind when we're dealing with base 10 that it's not necessary, so it's just as acceptable to just write 2106 as we normally would. Now let's look at a hexadecimal expansion. Now hexadecimal again is something we haven't dealt with before and this one gets a little bit tricky because we're dealing with 16. So hexadecimal means that we're dealing with a base of 16 and the problem with this is obviously when we're looking at one digit numbers we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, but when we get to 10, we don't have a one digit number because if I wrote 10, that would be two digits. So that's where you can see I've written this row out for you that 10 would be A, 11 would be B, 12 would be C, 13 would be D, 14 would be E, and 15 would be F. So these are the values that we're going to use for hexadecimal to decimal expansion. But the good news is it's really just exactly the same thing. So to find my solution, I'm going to just recopy this over here. And again, this is base 16. And just as I did before, I didn't leave myself a lot of room 
and I apologize, but this would be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And so I would start with 2 times 16 to the 4th, because I'm using my first value and then the exponent. Plus, and now I can use a, but a is not a, a represents 10. So I'm going to say 10 times 16 to the third. Plus, and now I have e. e, again, represents the value of 14. So 14 times 16 to the second. Plus 0 times 16 to the first. Plus b, and b is 11. And so that is my expansion. Again, I can use my calculator to calculate all of these separate values and then at the end add them all up to find my final solution. Obviously, I've done this ahead of time so I know all of the values. And when I add up all of these values, I get 175,627. Again, keep in mind, I could write that base 10 just to be clear that it's base 10. Uh, but it's not wrong if I don't put the base 10 because that's how we generally do things with base 10 numbers. Up next, we're going to take a look at doing what we just did in the reverse order. So we'll start with a decimal expansion and convert to binary, octal, or hexadecimal. 